Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. Uh, my name is Ruth, and today we are going to be discussing on uh, simple classification of substances, and we are going to be looking at constituents of matter, and um, this in regards to uh, chemical equations, uh, specifically word equations. Uh, later on, in Form 2, we are going to discuss on uh, converting these word equations into uh, chemical formulas and um, chemical equations. So previously we looked at chemical um, symbols and it's uh, in relation to what you are going to do today. So you can go and watch that lesson before we begin the lesson. So we looked at different chemical symbols derived from uh, different, um, both English and Latin. And you also saw that some chemical symbols begin with the first letter, while others have two letters. And always we said the first letter will always be in capital, while the second letter is in small, as, as in small, so in small letter. So today we are going to look at the simple word equations, and then we'll do a few questions in regards to what we are going to discuss. So first, we are going to start with uh, what a chemical equation is. It usually is a linear summary uh, of a chemical reaction. It shows uh, reactants and products of a certain uh, chemical reaction. So if we are reacting some compounds, we are able to show the ones that are reacting and after reaction, what are some of the products that are being formed after that reaction. So, for example, uh, the reaction between iron and sulfur. Remember, we said this is will form a compound and it adds with an IDE. We mentioned that in the previous lesson. So, iron and sulfur reacts to form iron 2 sulfide. You can see this is referred to as a chemical equation and specifically word equation. So in this process, ion and sulfur is the reactant. They are the ones that are reacting together, while ion 2 sulfide is what you are getting after the reaction. And we call it the product. This is the product that we are forming at the end of the day. So you can see some of the things that you notice in this chemical equation is the first thing you notice is that the reactants are usually on the left side. And then the reactants are usually, or the products, sorry, are usually on the right side. In between the reactants and the product, we have an arrow. This arrow helps us to see that the reactants are going and reacting and forming the product. So you can see an arrow in this reaction. So this is what we refer to as word equation. But sometimes you can be having more than one reactant. So if you have more than one reactant, what you notice, we combine this reactant with a plus sign. So the plus sign, it means it reacts with, it also means and. We are reacting to ion and sulfur, or ion reacts with sulfur. And then the arrow shows, this is what it forms, like ion and, and, and sulfur forms ion 2 sulfide. So that is a function of the arrow. And then the arrows are also unique in chemistry. When you write a full arrow like this arrow, you notice it usually means that the reaction are moving forward and they are permanent. They cannot go back like we said of the chemical changes that the reactions are reversible. If you see one arrow in, the, in a chemical equation, it tells you that reaction is permanent. It's one, it moves in one direction. We cannot reverse that equation or we cannot reverse, reverse that uh, chemical reaction. If you see two arrows in this case, it means that this, uh, this reaction can move forward and backwards. It means it can be reversed. Like we were discussing on the zinc oxide and we said zinc oxide, which is white in color, can be reversed to form zinc oxide to form zinc oxide, which was yellow when it's heated, so it can be reversed back to form zinc oxide, which is white, if you cool it down. So this was just an example. Go back to the lesson and check that out. We had discussed it in the 
chemical changes. So this is how now an equation looks like. So it is important for you to note the arrows and do not confuse the arrows. We do have also other different types of arrows. We have arrows that look like this. And this one usually represent an equilibrium reaction. So this reaction is moving forward and backwards at the same time. So we are forming products and reactants at the same time. Although at this level, you do not need to discuss more on the equilibrium. You're going to learn about it later on in form three and form four. So that's it on the, on the formation of chemical compounds. Next, we are going to look at some of examples of this chemical equation. So like in the first case, we discussed iron reacting with sulfur. So it is for you to know the product that is going to be formed. And we talked about this product. They come from the compound, what we discussed in the previous lesson. So if you combine iron and sulfur, these are two elements. They are going to form a, ide, a compound with IDE. So it forms iron to sulfide. You can see we have separated the two reactants with positive, And then we have used an arrow to show the product that is going to be formed. And the product is iron to sulfide. Sulfur reacting with oxygen. So we have two reactants, sulfur and oxygen. We are separating them with a plus sign. And then they form a product called sulfur 4 oxide. I know you have a question on the 4 and the 3 and the 4. In this case, you're going to learn where the 4 comes from later on when we go to the structure of the atom from 2. So sulfur and oxygen form sulfur oxide. We discussed about the IDE when we were discussing on compounds and elements. Carbon reacting with oxygen. Carbon is a reactant. Oxygen is a reactant. You can see there are more than one. So we separated with a positive sign and it forms carbon four oxide. You've heard of carbon four oxide uh, and you'll hear about it later when you talk about air and combustion. And then iodine sublime. So the equation doesn't necessarily have to have more than one reactant. In this case, this is also an equation like when we are discussing on the chemical changes. So iodine, when you heat it, what happens? It can go forward to form the vapor which can cool down to go back to iodine. We said when you have two arrows, it means that the reaction is reversible. You can reverse that reaction. So this is also an equation. Equations come in different ways and different forms, different reactants and different products. So it depends on what you have been given and what you're going to form. So lastly, let's look at uh, uh, some questions in regards to what we have been discussing. So write a word equation for the reaction between carbon and oxygen, sodium and sulfur, copper and chlorine. So we will start with carbon and oxygen. These are two elements. So we know we will form a compound that has an IDE. So carbon reacts with oxygen. You have to write that to form carbon for oxide. You see the IDE. Sodium reacts with sulfur to form sulf sod sodium sulfide with an IDE, like we said in compounds and elements. So sodium uh, plus sulfur, uh, we form uh, sodium sulfide with an IDE. And finally, copper with chlorine. So copper is going to react with chlorine to form copper chloride with an IDE, copper chloride, to see the IDE. So that concludes for us the lesson for today. Uh, I hope you have been able to see how we write simple word equations. Later on in form two, you'll convert these word equations into chemical equations. So see you in the next lesson.